Until recently, Instagram only gave you two ways to share your videos, stories and page posts. Stories were amazing for creators, allowing them to tell stories in a unique way. They only last for 24 hours, they're 15 seconds long each, and in their vertical aspect ratio, it allowed for creators like Jesse Driftwood to entertain us every day with something different in our feeds. Page posts, on the other hand, don't disappear. They can be horizontal or vertical, and if you post an IGTV, it gives creators up to 10 minutes of length to post their video. In the last few months, Instagram added Reels, which kind of blends the two. It allows us to create 15 second posts in vertical aspect ratio, similar to like a TikTok video. Recently, I've been fascinated with Instagram Reels, how to make them interesting, how they're consumed by consumers, and I really dove into making more of them. With our attention spans shrinking and there already being so much content out there, Reels gives us creators a different way to make videos that's a little bit more digestible and easier to consume. This shorter form of content takes less time to produce, and more importantly, it is highly shareable. And the more shareable it is, the more reach you're going to get on Instagram, the more followers and fans, and eventually you're going to build an audience a lot faster. Last week, my friend and I shot and produced a reel for Big Rock Brewery, which is based in Toronto, to promote their beer and grow their audience on social media. So today I want to break down all the steps to making that reel, how to make it exciting, how to make it shareable, and hopefully you can take these tips and make something good for yourself. Before you begin planning the shoot and planning the edit, the first thing you gotta do is find a song. And most importantly, within that song, there needs to be an exciting, interesting part that is loopable. For example, in the reel you saw at the beginning of this video, I found this jazz hop song with a very interesting, energizing section in the middle. So I brought that song into sequence and I cut down that part that was interesting and made sure that the ending of that section loops directly into the beginning. There's two ways to make sure that that loop is perfect from start to finish. The first is duplicating the layer, holding Alt and click and drag and put it beside the original and listen to see if it works. The second way is you can just set an in and out point on the, the track without duplicating, click the loop button up here, and then play back and listen to see if it loops perfectly. Sometimes you gotta do a little fine tweaking, but it's just about listening and making those adjustments. Looping the music is a great place to start to make the beginning of the end of that video very seamless, but what puts the icing on the cake is if you can make the beginning and the end of the video also seem like it's one seamless transition. The reason it's good to loop the music as well as the video is that it creates a very easy viewing experience for whoever's watching the video. They don't have to think or do anything to restart it, watch it again, or go to any parts they like, and it appears that there's no ending to the video, which keeps people watching and watching over again, even if they don't realize it. They're just gonna keep watching. But before we jump into how we shoot and edit these reels, we need to talk about the aspect ratio to make them fit your screen perfectly. Instagram reels aspect ratio is a nine by 16. This is very important that you understand this before you begin shooting, because in post, you're gonna be cropping the sides of your frame to fit into that nine by 16 aspect ratio. So now that you have the song looping, it's time to plan how you're gonna shoot it. With the reel I made, I thought it'd be best to start the video and end the video on the exact same framing. So I had my friend come in on frame, put the bag down, and then put that four pack of beer in the bag and walk off. The way I made sure that the shot and framing was perfect is I did this all in one take at the beginning of the shoot. Then I took the camera off the tripod and shot the rest of the B-roll. I didn't wanna have to shoot the beginning, take my camera off the tripod, shoot the B-roll, and have to align it perfectly on the tripod again. I don't wanna make any mistakes there, so it's always important if you're gonna shoot the same shot beginning and end, that you shoot that right away and then move on to the b-roll. When on set shooting, there's a few ways we can go about capturing a vertical video. One way you can actually do this is holding your camera vertically like this. Ideally, you'd be doing this if you have a flip out LCD screen such as this, and you can change it to face you and then capture the video as you please like this. Personally, the way I went about shooting this was I just held it horizontally, did all my movements, and then I adjusted accordingly in post. Now, the tricky thing is when shooting in horizontal, you need to be watching what your composition looks like and think about how that's gonna translate into the edit. So on set shooting, I always made sure to keep my subject in the center of my frame because like I said before, we're cropping off the sides. So whatever I'm gonna show, I made sure to keep in the center. On top of that, I was making sure I wasn't too close to my subject because when you're bringing horizontal video into your sequence, which is vertical, you're gonna have to scale and move the footage accordingly, which we'll get into later. And there might be a chance that you cut off what's on the left and right. So you wanna make sure you're a little bit further away to adjust for that scale and crop in post. Now, when you get all the shooting done, keeping those tips in mind, it's time to jump into the editing software and figure out how we're gonna make this banger work. And personally, when I'm making any edit, I always make two sequences. One for cutting the footage to separate the good takes from the bad takes, and the other one is the main edit that I'll be exporting from. So like I said, first, I make the cutting sequence, which is just a standard 16 by nine horizontal so I can see the entire frame, and I create my sequence just with one of the regular presets. From there, I'll drag on my footage and then make my new sequence, select the preset I just used, but I'll click over into the settings tab and then I'll switch the resolution values to 1080p 
by 920. Next up, I have my song that I've already clipped and edited, and then I begin to drag in the clips that I want to use. Now you have both your sequences set up, you have your song edited, it's in the main sequence, and you can start dragging in your footage. So as you can see in the main sequence that we're exporting from, when you drag in that horizontal clip, the footage doesn't fill that entire frame. So obviously the way to do this is you go up to your effect controls and scale the image to fit the frame. So now that your footage is scaled up and it's in, sometimes it's not perfectly framed or it's not showing exactly what you want. So the way that you can make sure that your composition is appropriate to what you need is you go up to your position value and you drag the X axis value to where you want your footage to be on the frame. And the last tip when you complete the edit, it's important that you rewatch to see if it's looping properly. So like I mentioned before, you wanna select an in point at the beginning and an out point at the end, hit the loop button and listen back to see if it's looping. And boom, there you go. That's how you plan, shoot and edit Instagram reels to make them banger, shareable, sick content. If you really enjoyed the video, please give me a like, comment and subscribe. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram to see some of the reels I'm making at will.j. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.